knowledge is power. And I guess in kind of linking up with what was being said earlier, knowledge shared is power multiplied. So I really believe that, you know, working together, we can achieve so much more. And that is what I also agree is missing. I think we can be, you know, a huge kind of force together, working collaboratively. And I think that is the future of kind of entrepreneurship and in this ever-changing landscape. The Mobile Organisation, I mean, it was founded to then celebrate the instrumental role that black music and culture has made to the world. Now, we do this through everything from uh, multi-artist shows, our flagship event, the Mobile Wars, to film screenings, premieres, um, creative campaigns, generating content. In fact, um, on the video, um, you saw Be Positive, and Be Positive are a choir made up of sickle cell members um, and their supporters. And the idea that was they were formed in partnership with NHSBT in order to encourage more black people to register and donate blood because there's a shortage out there. And it was just incredibly rewarding to use the kind of platform we have for a bigger purpose, because we got fed up of always hearing about the negativity surrounding black music. And we wanted to sing a different tune. And it was just fantastic to work um, with a partner like the NHSBT and just kind of, you know, um, we worked for a couple of months. Um, Be Positive, which is a mindset as well as a blood type, the name, ended up performing on the MOBA Awards. We gave them their very first platform and then they went on to, if anybody saw them, um, Be Positive were on Britain's Got Talent. Is that Britain's Got Talent? Yes. <laughs> and became Simon Cowell's wild card. So we're kind of really proud of the kind of continuity continuing success um, that Be Positive are continuing to do. Now our ethos has always been that any person, kind of regardless of their background, should be able to reach their full potential through their own creative endeavours. And we, you know, wanted every kind of young kid in any bedroom or community or family to be able to think big and be inspired. And that was always a kind of burning desire from the beginning. So, I mean, now it's, you know, over for, for over two decades. Can you believe it? <laughs> two decades, I know I look a lot younger. <laughs> yeah. We've been a um, leading force in kind of champion urban music and culture. And, you know, every act who's ever been nominated or won a MOBA award has a story to tell. And now we're trying to tell more stories beyond the realms of music. And so that is why, you know, we've set up a kind of a film production company and that is why we're kind of hosting kind of movies, I guess, of Black Origins. My upbringing, I guess, um, was my driving force in setting up a business. I grew up um, being the youngest girl of nine children and I always had lots of kind of creative dreams um, and goals and um, my father died when I was very young and obviously having nine children, um, you know, I needed to kind of support the family. So whenever I, you know, wanted to go to, you know, the tricycle theatre to act or, you know, to kind of um, play music, you know, we couldn't afford to do that. And so, you know, I... I um, had to take any job I could get to kind of pay the bills. And I truly believe standing up here today that that, that gave me the drive and determination and also resilience that you need to run a business. Because I often, when you go to events, sometimes you hear someone talking about setting up their own business and trying to grow it. And it sounds easy, but it's not. And it's extremely challenging. And that's why I kind of admire you two being best friends, having your best friend to kind of be able to talk to and kind of share ideas and bounce off. Because it, it, in the beginning, when I started off, you know, I was talking about inequality in the music industry. And, you know, um, I said, you know, it was, a, well, let me tell you about the time, you know, I started. It was in 1996, so it was a kind of very, very different climate. Um, it was a time when, um, you know, Ella Fitzgerald had died, um, you know, and Tupac, 
Um, and it was a significant chapter for black culture. And Nelson Mandela had been released from prison after 27 years of captivity. And the place he chose to visit was Brixton you know, here in London, an area identified with inequality. And at the time, there was this um, song called Three Nelson Mandela, you know, a kind of performed by a multiracial group, the specials. And, you know, it made us all feel that we're, you know, the, kind of we're bigger than the sum of its parts. And, you know, music has always been used as a kind of, uh, a, you know, music has always kind of empower, can empower you and inspire you to transcend racial injustices. And, you know, I went round um, um, talking to lots of people because Britpop, you know, it's all about Britpop. Spice Girls were big at the time. And, you know, reggae, hip hop, you know, um, the mainstream weren't very receptive to those music genres. So I wanted to do something about it. So I remember going to see kind of many, many kind of organisations talking about, you know, the kind of music I grew up listening to. And I was told that, you know, black music won't sell, the media won't get behind it, um, you know, um, it just will never work. If you were to do, you know, something like a platform celebrating black music, artists wouldn't show up. So I had to kind of shut out all the noise in my ear, and, and which we all have, and, you know, the detractors, and my overwhelming desire kind of led me to kind of um, remortgage my house. Um, um, you know, against my mother's better judgment, because she, she, my mother always wanted me to be a teacher, and I kind of failed in the traditional aspect, but I find myself often on stages, so I'm teaching in another way. Um, but yes, so the uh, climate we're in, um, you know, was kind of, it was, the musical landscape was changing, you know, and I was surrounded by so many kind of talented artists, and I just needed to do something about it. And so I, I remember being so frustrated after talking to so many organisations. I thought, you know what, I'm going to make this happen, you know, and I can relate so much to, you know, what everyone has said here. So, you know, what did I end up doing? I ended up, um, you know, contacting, um, you know, broadcasters. I ended up contacting um, Tony Blair, was leader of the opposition. We'd had 17 years of a Conservative government at the time, and he was seen as the big hope. So we contacted um, everybody, and I remember, you know, not getting any replies, but, you know, obviously, you know, I, I was very kind of persuasive. So I ended up con asking um, Tony Blair's office, is it okay if we keep in touch with you? And they said they were very polite and said yes. So every time we had some sort of good news, I would kind of um, share it with them. And then like when, you know, we, we um, you know, got our TV slot. I remember, um, you know, um, talking to, you know, obviously Tony Blair's office and, you know, there's a fine line between being persuasive and being a pain. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of balanced that quite right. I balanced that quite well. And I ended up, you know, getting a message back saying, don't get all your hopes up. <laughs> but, you know, the, um, Tony Blair would like to come to your first show and, you know, he's going to be bringing Sherry Blair. So, of course, we then went into overdrive. And by this time, um, we had had a launch because um, nobody had heard of, obviously, the name. We'd come up with the name Mobo, a short name that would be mem memorable. So we launched this, the concert at Ministry of Sound on a Sunday and we got loads of coverage. And then I was recommended to a broadcaster. And it was at the time they were doing a lot of research recognising that kind of a London audience would become more diverse. And so I remember being told, look, Khan, you've got good news and bad news for you. The good news is we're going to give you a TV slot. The bad news is we've got little budget and you've got to put on the show in six weeks. But, you know, when you get opportunities like that, my overwhelming desire to succeed allowed me to kind of assemble a crew 
and just make it happen. And so I remember when, you know, Tony Blair ended up showing up, you know, we had global superstars from all around the world. They wanted to shake hands with them saying, you know, we want to shake hands with the new prime minister. And that went down very, very well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I remember, you know, my mother at the time couldn't wait to sort of jump on Tony Blair because she, you know, she said to him, look, I've got this fantastic hardworking daughter because she was trying to persuade him to give me a job. <laughs> because she couldn't accept at the time that I had, was running a company and employing other people. Um, and so, yeah, it was um, hilarious. And I think it was only when I got my MBE in 1999 that she thought with royal recognition, um, you know, I was doing okay. So <laughs> I was doing okay after all. Um, I guess I just quickly end by, I guess, sharing, I guess, a story with you. Um, you know, there was this guy um, that was walking down the street and when he falls down a hole in the ground and um, the walls are so steep that he can't get back out again and people are passing by and then um, he hears a singing voice and he recognises it, it is his friend. So he says, Kofi, Kofi, can you hear me? You know, and he said, hey, hey, Kofi. So Kofi then jumps down the hole and our guy says, are you stupid? You know, we're both down here. How are we going to get out? And Kofi says, I've been down here before, so I know the way out. And basically what I'm trying to say is kind of knowledge is power. And I guess in kind of linking up with what was being said earlier, knowledge shared is power multiplied. So I really believe that, you know, working together, we can achieve so much more. And that is what I also agree is missing. I think we can be, you know, a huge, kind of forced together, working collaboratively. And I think that is the future of kind of entrepreneurship and in this ever-changing landscape. So thanks very much. Wonderful.